In this example, we're going to see a combination of techniques that we've um, seen in some earlier examples. We'll see completing the square, we'll see um, splitting up a fraction into multiple pieces, um, and we'll see using uh, use substitution and using integration rules. So this is a nice cumulative problem. Um, I encourage you to pause the video now and go ahead and, and take the initial step of completing the square and seeing if you can progress through um, integrating this on your own and then come back and look at the video and um, see if your solution agrees with what I'm going to write out here. So here I have a definite integral. This is our only definite integral in, in this um, section, um, just to give us some practice with uh, a definite as well as the earlier indefinite integrals that we looked at. So here I have the integral from negative 1 to 0 of x over x squared plus 2x plus 2 dx. And I mentioned completing the square is going to be something that we're going to want to do first. One reason that I know that um, completing the square is going to be useful is that, well, out of the techniques that I have so far, um, u substitution isn't going to help me because if I let u be that x squared plus 2x plus 2, my du will be 2x plus 2, and I only have an x in that, that numerator. Um, but I know that for quadratics, which I do have in, in the denominator here, I have a quadratic function. So I'm going to go with trying to complete the square to see what um, kind of simplification that might lead to. So notice that x squared plus 2x plus 2 with completing the square will be equal to x plus 1 squared plus some correction term. So x plus 1 squared would be x squared plus 2x plus 1. If I want to have um, 2 be the term that I have, I'm going to need um, a plus 1 added to that. Okay, so we see that I'm looking at the integral then from negative 1 to 0 of x over x plus 1 squared plus 1 dx. Okay, um, so looking at this, we want to think carefully about what we could do next. So it doesn't look like I can split this up. I do have some sort of something squared plus 1 in the denominator, which reminds me kind of of a tangent, but I have an x in the numerator and not um, just a single number. So here's where we're going to want to do a little bit of a, a fancy u substitution. Um, let's try letting u be equal to x plus 1. So if I have um, u is x plus 1, then my du is dx. Okay, so for my denominator, that gives me u squared plus 1, my dx is du. But now notice I'm going to need to rewrite my um, x that's in the numerator in terms of u. So notice that if u is equal to x plus 1, x is going to be equal to u minus 1. So we have this little extra substitution. So see how this problem is incorporating already two techniques so far. We've done a completing the square um, step, and now we're doing that little extra u substitution type step. So x is going to be u minus 1. Now notice that um, with the, this definite integral here, I started with x limits from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0. Um, now I need to change the x limits to u limits. So you always need the limits that are on your integral to match the variable that you are um, integrating with, whoops, integrating with respect to. So if I've got du here, I'm going to have to have limits in terms of u. So notice that when x is equal to negative 1, if u is equal to x plus 1, u is equal to negative 1 plus 1, so u is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, u is equal to x plus 1, so u is equal to 0 plus 1, so u is equal to 1. So now we have this integral from 0 to 1. Um, everything is nicely in terms of um, u, so I'm not going to have to go back to x at any point. So what's the next technique that I had? So, so far we did completing the square, and we did some u substitution. Okay. So what's next? Well, notice that I have here a fraction where I have u minus 1 over x squared plus 1. I have a small, smaller degree in the numerator than in the denominator. Um, but this is like one of our earlier cases where I had a linear thing over a quadratic thing, and I could think of that, that denominator as a common denominator that came from adding two separate fractions. So I'm going to use that this 
uh, technique of splitting this up into two pieces. So I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of u over u squared plus 1 du plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Okay, so I think I should be using a um, different color maybe to highlight what our steps are. So we did completing the square. Let's see, probably red is going to be the best, most distinct thing. So we did completing the square, we did u substitution, and now we're doing that technique where we split up um, into the two different fractions. So now I can look at each of these pieces separately. This should remind us of one of our earlier examples. I'm going to be able to do a substitution on this first piece, and this second piece is going to involve some sort of an arctan. Okay, so let's see what that substitution looks like. Since I've already used a u, I'm going to use a new variable. So let's let w be u squared plus 1. So my dw will be 2u du, or I'll have 1 half dw is u du. Again, I'm going to have to um, change some of the, the values that I have here. So because I'm going to go to a new variable, I'm going to need to make sure I have my um, limits in terms of this new variable w. So let's see, the u du part was going to be 1 half dw. u squared plus 1 is just w. When u is 0, w is going to be 0 squared plus 1, or 1. When u is 1, w is going to be 1 squared plus 1, or 2. So I'm going to have this integral then from 1 to 2. Okay, so for the second piece, this 1 over u squared plus 1, that's exactly our um, basic rule for our arctangent. I've got arctangent of u. Um, I'm just going to write an arctan function here. I didn't write a variable next to arctan because we were just trying to say it was an arctan type function. We hadn't yet thought of exactly um, what the argument was going to be for arctan. So I'm going to have arctan of u is that antiderivative, and I'm just going to need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. Okay, so before we go to the next step, I just noticed that um, we have u minus 1 right here. So this should actually be a minus, and this should be a minus. Okay, always have to be careful to track those kinds of things. So here when we take our integral from 1 to 2 of 1 half over w, we have 1 half log of the absolute value of w evaluated from 1 to 2. Whoops. And then this is going to be minus um, arctangent of 1 minus arctangent of 0. Putting parentheses around that, so I remembered that that minus sign outside will need to be distributed. So we have 1 half log of 2 minus log of 1 minus my arctangent of 1. And arctangent of 1 is pi force, since, since um, tangent of pi force is 1. So this is pi force. And um, our tangent of 0 is 0, so I would have just plus 0 there. Um, notice that log of 1 is 0, so our final answer here will be 1 half log 2 minus pi force is the value of our integral.